Welcome to the new episode of MindFusion's series of video tutorials for React, where we demonstrate how to use various useful features of the diagramming library. In today's episode, we will build this organization chart that you see. We will show you how to create nodes from code, how to apply a layout, and how to render custom anchor points on nodes. The anchor points are those tiny black cross signs that appear at all sides of the nodes. There is a slight difference to the appearance of our project as from Tutorial 2. That is because we have added some CSS styling to the UI. We declare a node height variable to keep the size of nodes. We will create 50 nodes in a cycle. In order to do that, we use the factory class of the diagramming library. Its create methods not only initialize new diagram nodes, link, containers, and others, but add them to the collection of diagram items, which you should otherwise do manually. We need to specify the location and the size of the new node. We will use a rect object for that, and we need to reference the MindFusion common namespace. Our rect has an increasing y value, e.g. each new node will be drawn under the previous one. How do we choose the shape of our new node? The simplest way is to specify one of the predefined node shapes. They are listed in the online documentation. Plaque seems a good choice. Let's use it. We call set shape and provide the ID of the predefined node. We will set text on each node in order to distinguish it from the others. Here is the factory class. You never create a factory object directly. You just call get factory of diagram. Not all our nodes are visible now. That is because the diagram area is too small. There is a method that automatically calculates the diagram area needed to fit all items drawn on the diagram canvas. It is called resize to fit items. Since it works on the canvas, we need to call it after the DOM has been initialized. The place to do this is the component did mount method. Now the diagram area is long to fit all items. It has also shrunk in width because there is no need for horizontal space. Now we will add the anchor points that guide the user where a new link can be connected. The class for that is called Anchor Pattern. There are several predefined anchor patterns, but you can set your own patterns using anchor points.
The Anchor Point class supports a lot of customization options about how the points can look. Here is the Mark Style enumeration, which has several options about the shape of the Anchor Point. Anchor patterns are assigned with the set anchor pattern method, and we will apply one to our nodes. We create a new anchor pattern, and there, the anchor points are set in an array. The last two parameters of the anchor point constructor indicate whether we allow incoming and outgoing links in this point. We allow both. Finally, we assign the anchor pattern to each node. Now we will add some links to connect these nodes. We get the first nodes in the diagram. We use again get nodes, which returns an array, and take its first element. We place it in an empty array and initialize a variable called counter. Here is a recursive method, which creates links between nodes, binding them in a tree hierarchy. Each node from the nodes parameter is linked to two consecutive diagram nodes that will serve as its children. The method is then called with the children as the new parents. The method is called recursively until the counter reaches the count of nodes in the diagram. Now all we have to do is call this method to generate the links. Here are our links. As you see, the diagram looks quite messy. We will apply an automatic layout to demonstrate what a transformation on a diagram it makes with just a few lines of code. The tree layout is a class in the graph's namespace like all other automatic layout algorithms. The members of the class show you the options for customizing the layout.
we add a new method called Arrange Diagram. In it, we create an instance of the Tree Layout class and set its Link Type property. This property specifies how the links will look – straight, cascading, etc. We call the Arrange method of diagram and provide the newly created Tree Layout instance as a parameter. What we are left to do now is call this method. Here is the final result. The diagram is neatly arranged, level by level. And this is the end of this tutorial. Thank you for watching and thank you for your interest in MindFusion Developer Tools.